Some incredible news regarding one of the most anticipated sci-fi RTS games of the last few years, really. Falling Frontier has some new gameplay footage, and I'm here to share it with you all. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. And yeah, I've been on a little bit of a vacation, but when I got an email regarding the new gameplay for Falling Frontier, which is coming out sometime very soon, I got incredibly excited. Now, the same folks who are publishing Manor Lords, a medieval city builder with army building aspects and a few other things, is also publishing this game. And I think Hooded Horse, the publisher, is really picking up some very interesting and very strong games that are being developed by developers who are completely passionate, like, to the nines on everything regarding their games. The sound design, the music, uh, all the vehicle design, radio chatter and whatnot all seem wonderful in Falling Frontier. And many of you might be anticipating Homeworld 3 this year too. And so it'll be very interesting to see what happens with a game that now is getting its third sequel, Homeworld 3, versus a game that's kind of getting its first start in a fictional kind of Earth solar system, perhaps more than that. Of course, today we'll be seeing the Battle of Mars, the Might of Mars trailer, but of course we could go to other places unknown, as we don't really know what the story may be. Now this game is stylish, really cool looking, really great sounding. In fact, I would argue that perhaps the sound design in a space game is almost more important than anything else, because of course, well, you can't hear sounds in space, but it would be completely boring and really unplayable to not be able to hear anything as an enemy ship explodes or as missiles come in or, you know, alarms and radio chatter really add to that immersion and also give you something to listen to. And I think this game's designed so far of what I've seen for the last two years. We've been seeing gameplay footage of uh, a little bit of actual, like, gameplay teasers that have shown how the game will work in terms of mining and some of the vehicles and uh, massive ships that will come in to add support and to be uh, either enemy vehicles or flagship cruisers or whatnot that might really turn the tide of battle. Well, without further ado, we're going to take our first look now at the Might of Mars trailer that just dropped recently, and we're going to uh, do a little analyzation of it, and then we're going to take a look at some other trailers that you may have missed and some other things pertaining to Falling Frontier that is coming out very, very soon. Oh yeah, well... <laughs> Even if it came out tomorrow, let's just be honest, right? That seems like forever to wait. Okay, let's go ahead and take our first look at the trailer. Link established. Sending packet now. The Hannibal reports action over Iapetus. He confirms the regiment was destroyed. He's requesting permission to pursue the Caligula.
Roger that. Materials are being offloaded and prepped for distribution. Colony comms synced and secure. Naval ops ready. Roger that, be online. Traffic is minimal in the AO. Recommend. 
document suggesting to fleet to delay any further shipments to the colony. Colony comms synced and secure. Supply destination coming online. Supply destination coming online. Mining operation is at 20% capacity.
surface targets locked in, missiles away. Gulliver Base, permission granted. Beric class frigate Sirtis and Coventry class frigate Caratha have been dispatched to assist. Rendezvous coordinates to follow in data packet. Good hunting. Out. Gulliver Base, this is for Hannibal. Rendezvous coordinates received. Can you confirm FTL approval is granted? Over. Is it confirmed? Yes, it's confirmed. Fourth Fleet is engaged in operations around Jupiter. Well, who else is there? The Caligula and Richmond. Okay, patch me in. Caligula, this is Comsat Fleet, over.
Well, there it is, looking more beautiful than ever. Every time we get a new trailer, I have to go back and see all the old ones to see the game's development over time. And this game still doesn't have a release date or even release window. It's not like it's going to be 2024 or 2025, just coming soon, as it says on the Steam store page. And for all of you maybe seeing this for the first time or have forgotten, remember this will be a single-player experience, at least at launch. There's always the possibility of multiplayer later. I mean, it could happen, but for now, it's going to be one of those space strategies strategy simulation 4X games with a hell of a lot of war and mining and fighting over valuable resources and that's quite apparent from the trailers and from all the uh, really the great cutscenes that look to be on par with uh, what got me excited about for example playing Homeworld for the first time some of those cutscenes being so well done with the voice acting and kind of the almost the minimal voice acting where it's just a voice and maybe some background noise or something that you'd hear on the Enterprise or something during one of the scenes but yeah, Falling Frontier is certainly a game that I've got to put high on my wish list, although with no actual release date, I don't know where to put it yet, but I am just as hyped for this as I am for Manor Lords and many other games being published by Hooded Horse. Remember, this is being developed by uh, Stutter Fox Studios, so, and uh, with really no other games from them before, I don't know exactly what to expect. At least I did a quick Steam search and didn't see too much from them, but uh, regardless, it looks like they've put all the effort and all the uh, focus into this with heavy elements from, again, uh, maybe Home uh, World and maybe some other things from like pal uh, Planetary Annihilation and some other games, although this will be taking place mostly on ships. I don't think we'll get any planetary gameplay, but man, if we get a sequel and that's where they go with this, that'd be amazing. It was just like when playing Deserts of Karak for the first time, seeing that uh, franchise Homeworld go to Deserts of Karak. Almost felt like a Dune game as well, and I would love to see some of these developers and or publishers work on a Dune game like that. Uh, but that's a whole different story for a whole different day. All right, everybody. Well, let me know your thoughts on this game down below in the comments section. Are you excited? Is this a day one for you? What would you pay for a game like this? If it's a first title from a new developer who doesn't seemingly have anything going else on from them uh, from before. Uh, but let me know. Is this an insta-buy for you? Is this something you would wait for? Is this something that the cutscenes have already grabbed you? What appeals to you the most? Where do you think they need to maybe do some work in? It is hard to tell because we don't actually see any gameplay you know, other than what's controlled by the studio and the publisher themselves. So let me know what you think, what you want to see more of, and I will see you all next time. And thank you very much, by the way, everybody, for all the birthday wishes. It's my birthday this week. Thanks again for subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for all the likes and uh, just the kindness and the awesomeness from the gaming community. And I hope to see you all very soon. Very, very soon. Bye. Welcome to the first reveal of Titan Rising campaign gameplay. The Cold War between Mars and Titan has stretched decades now. You are the commander of the Titan Federation vessel Pinnacle, on your way home to Titan after a diplomatic mission to Ganymede. In need of resupply, you set a course for Anders Station, a port hidden within the billowing clouds of an asteroid cluster known as the Forge.
Thank <laughs> you.